Welcome to part two of my Nepal bullet journal setup for the month of September. If you haven't seen the first in the video series for this month, I will leave it linked down below. Um, that's where I did my cover page and the first few pages of this setup. But now on to the second part, starting with my mind map page. So if you haven't been to the channel before, on my mind map page, I like to find either someone recognizable from the country I visit or someone who's just doing impressive things. And I actually went for the latter with this month's mind map. I learned about a young woman called Kanshan Amatya, who is an activist and a social entrepreneur. Um, she was born in Kathmandu in 96, so she's still very young, but is well on her way to making a really big difference in Nepal and reaching the world stage as well. So she's best known for her work in promoting rural women's access to education in Nepal. But the main thing I found really interesting was she's actually the activist and entrepreneur behind the Sustainable Fish Farming Initiative, um, which is where she basically encourages rural women in Nepal to create this um, fish farm that they um, build themselves, they run themselves, and then they sell themselves, like sell the fish from it all sustainably. And it's like a great source of income for them while also feeding their community and others. So I thought it's a really great idea for her to be encouraging people that wouldn't necessarily be educated to the point of making these kind of plans for themselves. So really, really great cause that she's working for. Her work has been recognized by the US President, Bill Clinton, the United Nations and the government of Nepal. Kanchen has even been recognized as one of the Forbes 30 under 30 list in 2019 and has received many awards throughout her career already. So I thought she definitely deserved a little bit of a shout out here and would make a beautiful mind map portrait. Uh, so that's where I begin. Now, usually when I work on this page, I like to keep my mind map to one half of the spread, whether it be on the left or the right. Um, mostly it is on the left just because I think more of comfort, like having the armrest of the page on the right. Um, but this one I did initially go, I was initially going to try and do her face central down the middle and then just leave the outskirts for writing. But I decided against it in the end because I thought it's it might look a little bit funny that the fold is like right through the center of her face. So I just avoided that. Um, but then once I lost that kind of, that sort of thought of having her down the center, I felt like I lost my creativity for how I was going to portray her. I don't know why, but I just found it a real struggle this time. Um, and she's, so she's a beautiful girl and I, but I just wanted to somehow make it look a little bit more unique. Um, and then I did throw around the thought of having this bird, which I'll talk about in a minute, this bird at the height of her eye and one of the bird's eyes being her eye. And I really wanted to do that, but then I was like, oh no, but then it might be um, sort of, it might say something different and I don't want her to be like looking at as if she's judged. I want her to be looked at as this really accomplished woman. So I thought maybe the peacock bird might distract from that. Um, so in the end, I went for like quite a basic um, illustration of her. So it is, I am using my gouache again. I'm loving the gouache at the moment. Um, and I started with the skin tone, silly me again, because I really struggled with getting the right color. Um, all I have is this pack of 12 colors from this gouache Holbein series. And it just kills me because I have to mix every color that I ever want from these. I just sometimes wish I had the same color, like it was a tube that I could just squeeze out and it's the skin tone that I need. Um, but yeah, I really have to build it and think about how I can make the, the skin tone a bit warmer or cooler or darker. And it's actually quite sometimes quite a struggle to get the right shade and then make enough of it to cover the skin. Um, so I was definitely experiencing some troubles with this mind map page. Um, in the end, it turns out all right, so it's okay. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you know of the inside what I was thinking when I was creating this. It wasn't all peaceful and roses. It was, yeah, like a little bit of frustration going on. Um, but yeah, I also wanted to include the national flower for Nepal, which is the rhododendron. I think I'm saying that right. Um, and I thought, oh, how can I add this creatively? And I originally was thinking maybe like a um, flower crown or a big, a big chunky flower necklace. Uh, but everything I thought of just felt like I'd done it before or felt wrong for this for this person 
Like it's hard to, I, I need to make the person sort of reflect in how I'm portraying them. That's something that I think about when I'm doing this. Um, so it just felt wrong. So because she's such a sort of professional, social entrepreneur and activist, it just felt like I couldn't go too floral and sort of tizzy for her. I felt like it had to be a little bit straight laced in the formation of this. Does that make sense? Uh, anyway, that's where my head was going. So I just went for a lone rhododendron as a necklace. And the rhododendron is actually called a laliguran in Nepali. Um, and it's their national flower, but they absolutely love it. And it's bright red flowers are a sign of spring coming. And people go sightseeing in the hills to see them and villagers collect the flowers to actually sell to passing travelers as well. Um, so quite an important flower for the country. So now, as mentioned, I wanted to include a special bird from Nepal in this, um, in this page, just to add a little bit more color and life to the spread, but also because I found this bird absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so this is the Himalayan Monal, and it's the national bird of Nepal. It's kind of got peacock vibes to me. The colors are so impressive, um, obviously much smaller than a peacock, but still part of the pheasant family. It's generally around 70 centimeters, so it's still fairly large, um, but they're also known in Nepal as Damph or Danfi. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, but that's what they're called there. But then in the neighboring countries of India, it's known as the Monal. So it's quite, a pop, it's quite a popular bird around those regions. It's in the least concerned range. So it's not endangered or anything. Um, but having said that, the crest on its head is um, wi widely acknowledged as a symbol of power. So it is poached for that reason, which is you know, ridiculous to me. Um, and hopefully that kind of stuff ends one day. Uh, but yeah, so here she is on the side of the page, just making a little entrance here, adding some color and glam to this page. And then for more glam, I had to use my gold marker again to create and tie in that circular feeling from the rest of this setup. And I just realized I said she, as in the bird was a girl, but it's definitely not a female bird because the females of the Monels are actually just plain brown shades, whereas the color ones, just like with other birds I think they're much more vibrant so they're all colorful so this is definitely a he on the spread I just thought I'd clear that up and then in terms of colors I was still trying to stick to a nice orange and blue sort of color palette throughout um, so I really really love the blue that I used I think it's a Faber-Castell Pitt artist pen and it's just such a beautiful blue so I wanted to use that on the on the Monel and the circle behind the girl so I used that and then tied in some of the ready orange shade into her lips and the flower and the top. So yeah, just by using those feature colors, I think it brought this spread together. Um, otherwise it did feel a little bit bitsy. And then just finishing off this page with the title mind map and we can see how it turned out. And now we can turn over and get started on the weekly pages. Now this month I decided to um, try and vary up the way I illustrate the actual days of the week and try and make them a little bit more interesting. I've been really just bored with the way I'm doing my weeklies lately so um, I tried to, tried to change it a little bit. I'm not 100% happy with it but um, there's elements that I like and that I'll include in the future. Um, so yeah, I did these across three spreads, um, made all the five weeks fit across the three, um, which I think is a good amount. But on this first page, I decided to draw this awesome gold peaked monastery, which is called Kopan Monastery. And it's right on the outskirts of Kathmandu. And it seems to just, just come out of nowhere. In some of the photos I found, it just sort of balances on the top of a mountainside covered in 
um, in trees and you sort of can't see where it starts. Um, so yeah, some of the images that I found of this were just incredible. I found one that had lovely fog in it and I thought that that's sort of what I picture when I think of Nepal, some like foggy, very cold, mountainous uh, regions. And then this Buddhist monastery was iconic for me. So I thought I would try and illustrate that in a very simple kind of way, just using my Pigma Micron and then a gold pen to enhance the roof part of this building and just add all those beautiful detailed peaks of the buildings with the gold. Now I mentioned in the last video that I really like the idea of Buddhism. I think it's quite a beautiful religion and the sort of the teachings of them I think is like worth it. So if I was to become religious, I reckon I would go down this Buddhist path, but I think I can appreciate it without um, going to the lengths of that. But somewhere like this would be amazing to see and actually go and do some of the teachings. So here at the monastery, they have um, the Tibetan monks that live here, but they also welcome visitors from everywhere and they will give you teachings and you can meditate, you can um, go through the gardens and you can sort of understand a bit more of their religion. And it's all about um, wisdom and compassion for others and helping people achieve ultimate happiness and reduce suffering for everyone. So I think it's just a really nice concept and I love the idea of going here. Um, I for one would really appreciate it and I think it would be so still for the mind to be part of this kind of atmosphere. Um, so yeah, I really, really liked this building and I had so much fun drawing it. I love being loose with architecture drawings and I was just really effortless with this one. Um, so I'm happy it turned out. I did also want to enhance the fact that it is surrounded by the Himalayas. So I wanted to put that mountain range in the background. And then just to add a little bit of interest to it, I thought I would cut along the edge of the right hand side page just to sort of reveal something beneath and make it not an entirely new spread beneath, sort of make it part of it. So I thought I would layer in behind um, Mount Everest. So to color in those mountains in the background, um, the Himalayas, I thought I would use a marker for the tops of them and then color them in with just something light. I didn't want it too bold. So I just used a pencil and I did like a, almost like a cross hatching or just a hatching to color them in. So now I didn't really go to any efforts to make Mount Everest look realistic or anything. I just wanted the idea of it to be there. Um, so it's just a very simple, basic mountain drawing. Um, but I thought I would go through some of the impressive facts that I learned about Mount Everest. Um, so the height of Mount Everest is 8,848 meters above sea level. It is over 60 million years old and every year it grows 44 millimeters. Now Mount Everest was only recognized by the Western world since 1841 and it was founded by a British surveyor called Sir George Everest. Now he just called it Peak 15. But then in 1865, the name Mount Everest was brought in in honor of his discovery. So it's actually supposed to be pronounced Everest, Mount Everest. But then I learned that we've only known about it being called Mount Everest since the 1800s. Before that, it was known as Sagamatha, which is in Nepalese and it means goddess of the sky. So this is a really sacred mountain for the Nepalese and even before attempting to climb Mount Everest itself, you will actually need to take part in a ceremony at the Everest base camp prior to setting foot on the mountain. And in this ceremony, you will basically be given permission and given safe passage to tread foot on this sacred mountain. So I found that all amazing stuff and I was glad I was able to share it with you because that is immediately what I thought of when I thought of Nepal. So here's how the first two and a half weeks look in my journal across these two spreads. And now moving on to the final spread of this setup and my remaining two weeks of September, I actually love this one. I had so much fun drawing this. I decided to go for an animal. Um, and this one I was very excited by because if you have seen the movie Turning Red, you will probably agree with me that red pandas are like the cutest things ever. 
And what I love that I learned is that they are from Nepal. I had no idea. So this gorgeous creature is native to Nepal along the eastern Himalayas and southwest China as well. I have always wondered why this guy is called a panda when it looks nothing like a panda. Well, when, in my research, I found that the reason it's called panda is comes from the Nepali word ponya, which means bamboo or plant eating animal. So red being the color that it is and then plant eating animal it makes complete sense. Now these guys like to hang out in trees mainly. They are very um, treetop animals and I think they're nocturnal as well. So you won't see them sort of down on the ground much during the day. We've actually got a couple of these at the Perth Zoo. And funnily enough, I went there yesterday with my family and we always go to the red pandas because of the movie Turning Red. So since watching that movie and the whole family, we loved it, it's such a good one. Um, but we'd never really thought about the red panda before that as being sort of a special animal, really, um, I'm sorry to say, but it was just something that we had forgotten about or not really noticed, it hadn't been on the radar. So I think that by having that movie, it sort of puts it into your eyes a little bit clearer, puts it into your mind. And so I've decided that I really feel that uh, big animation companies should literally do a movie for every endangered species to give it a real character about them that makes everybody in the world appreciate that particular animal and see it in a new light. Because honestly, the red panda at the Perth Zoo gets so much attention now. And I really wonder whether that was there before, because, you know, there's only... I don't know, there's only 10,000 left in the wild of these, and so they are endangered. I wonder if it's now more at the forefront so that they're actually being protected more and interested in more by people around the world. I hope you know what I mean. But yes, I really think endangered species should all have their own movie like Turning Red, and then, um, yeah, we'll be able to help them more and protect more of our beautiful creatures on this planet. So to draw this guy, I am just using my Pigma Micron and I once again didn't want to go too in depth with how I illustrated him. So I tried to keep it basic and use a little bit of line shading. And then I did want to add some color to the page. So I just used that same orange that I've used throughout that was the perfect color for his fur. And then just a hint of green in the background for the trees. And then I also wanted to use some pencil and because the pencil when shaded sort of on the angle it kind of gives a rough texture against the paper it ended up looking a little bit like fur and like it was intentional <laughs> which it wasn't but it turned out quite nice and just managed to find the right shade so all the shaded the shadowed parts of the red panda I did in texture or marker and then just went over with my pencil to give it a little bit more of a finishing touch and a little bit of texture so this is how the final page looks. I've also left a little note section on this page as well. So now I'm going to do a full flip through of the September setup in my journal. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for supporting me over on Patreon. It really helps me keep this content going and yeah, I really appreciate you being there. Uh, if you aren't part of my Patreon and you're interested in learning more or seeing more of my content, the link to the Patreon channel is down in the description box. Also along with my other socials like Instagram or even to join up for my monthly newsletter that I provide a little bit of extra content for the countries and the art related stuff that I do here on YouTube. Um, so thank you so much for watching and I will now pass over to future me where I will make the choices for the month of November. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Nepal setup, everyone. I thank you so much for watching and seeing what I created with it. Now I'm ready for the month of September to come along. Um, so without further ado, I'm about to choose the selections for November because as mentioned in my previous video, October is chosen and we are off to Scotland. Um, so yeah, I have my three jars here. Just ignore this one. Just doesn't fit the series. Just ignore what you see there. Okay, so starting with our large countries, these are the countries with a population of 30 million or more. So swiveling it around, we don't get any, no, we do get a surprise. <laughs> okay, so I have one, I have one, and it is, oh, Italy. I feel like I did Italy. Oh no, I did that massive, I did do Italy. I did it for Christmas. 
that shouldn't be in here. I did that for Christmas last year, so sorry. Pick again. I loved Italy. <laughs> uh, there we go. We got one, we got one, we got one. We have the US of A. I know a lot of you are from there. Would you like to see me explore your country? I have only been to a very small part of it. Love the thought of the US and doing that. Uh, but it's, it's up to you guys. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. Uh, the next one is from the middle countries. These are between 8 million and 30 million. And okay, I have one, I have one, I'm shaking it off. We've got Cuba. Ooh, that would be very cool to investigate. A lot smaller, I think, than the USA. So uh, we'd have a lot of content here. We'd have less content here to discover. Um, but I think both would be really fun so far. So ooh, glad I'm not choosing. <laughs> Uh, and then the last one is going to be the countries beneath 8 million in people. Okay, I have one, I have it, checking it off, what is it? We have Denmark. Denmark has come out a few times and so many people want to see Denmark. Um, I hope you guys can choose between these three. I have no idea what I would choose to be honest. I would love to investigate all three of these um, and I think I could find some inspiration from all of them. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. So if you want to let me know whether you want to see United States, Cuba or Denmark for the month of November, then let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy this content, feel free to share it with a friend who you think might enjoy it as well. Um, it is hard to get seen on YouTube um, because of the algorithm. And I don't know that my content is getting out there to people that would really enjoy it. But if you know someone, please share it. That would really help me out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.